Welcome back to the channel. I'm off to my favorite spot. I gotta go get my levels checked. Make sure I'm all topped off. Get my ferritin levels checked. I had no idea what ferritin was. Hemochromatosis. That's a mouthful, ain't it? Anybody that doesn't know me personally, you probably have never even heard of it. But we're gonna do a video on it. And it's no kind of medical advice, because I'm not a doctor, and I'm not gonna try to tell you what to do for it if you have it. Some of you might be suffering and have absolutely no idea what you even have, like, like me. This is just gonna be an introduction, and it's probably gonna be a couple of parts to this video. Ferritin levels are basically the delivery system in, in a human's body that delivers iron to and from parts of your body. Don't believe uh, that it shows up on a regular test when you go to your primary physician. When you go to a your regular doctor and they say they check your levels on everything. There's so much more they can they can test you for other than just uh, the little panel that they do. I suffered for a long time. I'm 45 years old. I started noticing that something wasn't right with me about 36. But it wasn't so bad to where I made a big deal about it. But about the, about the time I turned 37, something was bad wrong and I knew it. And I was having all sorts of problems. My health just totally plummeted. The very first thing that I noticed started going wrong was my right hand hurt really bad. So I went to the doctor. I'm a truck driver, so he's like, oh, you're shifting gears too much. Your hand, your hands are, you're wearing your hand out. Maybe that wasn't right, but he gave me some ibuprofen, I took it for a while, and it, it seemed to uh, uh, just dull the pain, but it didn't take it away. Things just kept getting worse and worse and worse. It, it, it has been a, a nightmare, to say the least. I've spent some time outside in the woods. I've had plenty of ticks on me. So for a long time, I, I researched on the internet, and the first thing the doctors will tell you is, oh, don't get on the internet. Don't Google search anything. Well, I've had nurse practitioners tell me that they go in the other room and get on a laptop and Google your symptoms, and the closest thing that resembles your symptoms that's what they pretty much say you have. We have MD. I do it, we all do it. You become your own doctor. So, I was convinced I had Lyme disease. I mean, I'd have bet the farm on it. I'd have bet everything on it. At that point, my body was falling apart. My hand started hurting really bad. I was having all kinds of heart issues, my heart skipping beats. It, it got to the point so bad, I mean, I didn't know if I was gonna live or die. It felt like every every day, every night, uh, this could be the last day. Uh, I would feel pain in my chest, couldn't hardly breathe, palpitations, really bad headaches, joint pain, my feet, my ankles, absolutely terrible, bone on bone pain. I'm hobbling around like I'm 95 years old. Oh, and the heat? Yeah, the heat is absolutely not your friend. You will overheat in 70 degree weather. Rapid weight loss, I went from 185, 190-ish to about 140 pounds. I looked like I was uh, on some kind of really good drugs. Barely being able to work, because you're going to work sick. The fatigue, you could sleep 12 hours, wake up, be up for 30 minutes, and feel like you've been up on a, a three-day bender. And then, muscle spasms. My wife, at some point, she thought I was just full of crap and, and thought I was wanting attention, and 
I was messed up in the head. Well, one night I was laying in bed and I threw the covers back and was looking. Everything was wiggling and twitching, muscle spasms. First time it ever happened. So I yell for her and she comes in there and she's looking like bug-eyed, like, oh, oh my God, what is that? I'm like, I don't know, you think I'm a magician? So I think that was the first thing that indicated that something was wrong. So I keep going back to the doctor. I'm having heart troubles and pains and shortness of breath and terrible headaches. A hundred pounds of lead weights all over you, just dragging you down. Kept going to the doctor all the time. You're, you're normal, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with you. Oh, really? I'm just worrying myself to death, I guess. Nobody seems to understand what's what's the matter with you. It gets to a point where people think that you're you're just wanting attention. That, that's not the case at all. I need I need attention. I need medical attention is what I need. But even the doctors won't help you. So you keep going to the doctor. They keep telling you nothing's wrong with you. You keep going home. You're literally dying. And the people at home eventually they can't help you, and they feel like man. Is that all this guy does is complain? I'm doing what they tell me not to do. I'm gonna look on the internet because I'm, I'm gonna get to the bottom of it. This is my life, my health. Oh, don't look on the internet. You're, you're an internet doctor. No, I'm trying to save my own life is what I'm trying to do. I'm convinced I got Lyme disease, 100%. And, and the doctor looks at me and asks me, why are you so sure you got Lyme disease? Well, because I've spent a lot of time out in the woods. No, I mean, what state? I'm like, uh, Kentucky. That's where I live at. Well, in Kentucky? Oh, then you're good. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, there's no Lyme disease in Kentucky. So I'm, I'm going. Hmm, I'm thinking, has this doctor bumped his head? He's telling me there's no Lyme disease in Kentucky. Hmm, that's weird. There's Lyme disease in every state, every city, all across the entire world. Everywhere, there's ticks with Lyme disease. So, I convince him, I'm like, look man, I need a Lyme disease test. So, if you get bit and you get the bullseye and you go immediately and get tested, there's a good chance it's gonna show that you have Lyme disease. But if you get bit, and sometimes you don't get that bullseye, if you wait for weeks or months until that stuff starts developing in you and you get sick, the test is more than likely going to show negative that you don't have Lyme disease. So he gives me a Lyme disease test. It's called a Western blot test. It comes back negative, but I'm not satisfied. And I tell him that, and me and him start butting heads. So I stop going to see him. He don't know what he's talking about. I find a Lyme disease doctor, and there's not many of them, and insurance doesn't cover Lyme disease treatments or any of that. That's a whole other thing that I ain't getting into. You have to pay cash out of pocket, and it ain't cheap. So I found one in Indianapolis. I live in Kentucky. I had to drive up there. I was lucky to find one that close. Scheduled an appointment, drove up there, they do a full-scale panel. You think the one at the doctor's long? Now, they'll take a couple tubes from you. They took like 12, 12 of those vials of blood. And I had to wait like a week. And I had to drive back up there again. We sit down and he said, well, I got good news and bad news. The good news is you don't have Lyme disease. I said, yeah, that's good. I said, but what's the bad news? says you have hemochromatosis and I said hema what it took me like two weeks to keep repeating the word in order to get it down and I said what in the world is that he said it's too much iron in your body you've heard of anemia right everybody on the planet's heard of anemia I said yeah I've heard of that he said well it's the opposite it's too much iron 
I said, well, how in the world did I get that? He said, you didn't catch it. You was born with it. I said, born with it? He said, and it usually takes until you're about 40 years old because iron builds up in your system slowly. He said, a normal man, your ferritin level should be between 10 and 100. I said, well, what's mine? He said, 6,995. And I didn't know what that meant, but I knew it wasn't good. I made the mistake of saying, how bad is that? And he looked at me straight faced, wasn't joking. And he said, you are critical right now. And he goes, you needed treatment probably a year ago. I was scared. I knew he knew what he was talking about. And he said, most people that he's diagnosed with it thought that they had Lyme disease. All the similarities and all the symptoms are closely related. So I wasn't wrong. I was, I was right on point. I said, all right, what do I need to do? Lay it on me. Nothing, nothing you're gonna take. Like, uh -oh. So I'm doomed. You're not doomed, he said, but said you gotta go get you gotta go have uh, a phlebotomy done or phlebotomies plural not singular what in the world is a phlebotomy i said i've heard of a lobotomy and he busted out laughing he said no they sound similar but not even close some of y'all may know what a, a phlebotomy is i didn't know so i said what is a phlebotomy Essentially, it's going to donate blood. So is that the only way to lower my iron? He's like, yes, you have to donate blood. This ain't gonna be good. I'm absolutely terrified of needles. There's nobody on this planet more scared of needles than me. There's, there's no way I'm gonna be able to do this. I said, well, how often do I do it? You're gonna have to do this for several years. Are you kidding me? Several years? Please, man, there's got to be another way. I'm like, I'm sorry, but there's not. So I pulled my, my bootstraps up. This was a big deal for me. And I have an absolute phobia of needles. I'm terrified of them. But I went, kicking and screaming. I tell you what, you could have been a fly on the wall. People at the blood center I go to, they called me their special patient. Like they had to get the smelling sauce and all that stuff out. Like that needle is long and it's not a small needle. It looks like a javelin in the Olympics where you're running and grabbing the pole vault thing. It's not fun. So the first probably 10 times I ever went, I was within hairs of passing out, seeing flashes of white light, dizzy, nauseated, shortness of breath. I mean, I was seeing the light. Each time I would go and donate blood, it would lower my iron. Keep in mind, I said a normal person donates blood eight weeks, every eight weeks. He wanted me to go twice a week. Impossible, couldn't do it. One time I went twice a week. It took me two days to get off the couch. I was that weak film. It was absolutely terrible. I just went once a week for a while. And then you get tired of getting poked with a needle, trying to pass out in the chair. Uh, it, it is the absolute strangest feeling getting ready to pass out. It really is. And it's not a good feeling. And you can't stop it. It's like looking through toilet paper tubes and it's slowly closing. It took me about 20 times of going, forcing myself to go before I could actually sit in that chair and get that needle stuck in my arm and donate blood. It's 550 milliliters of blood that I give. That's an IV bag pumped full, like round. It looks like a football. It makes me absolutely weak. 
it's not a good feeling. I'm getting ready to pull up here at the, the doctor's office. So now it's been three or four years later, I've got my ferritin levels back down to normal within range. I need to go today and have them have them checked. There's a there's quite a bit more, but that was kind of in a nutshell. I'm gonna get deeper in depth on it, I guess. Get them to go into the uh, doctor's office here. And I will continue this video here in just a little bit.